tell me when I can start right now? Yes, right now. It's oh, okay. recording. Okay. Hi. Uh, Welcome. Welcome. Yeah, thank you very much, first of all, uh, to uh, Darius and the organization uh, for giving me the opportunity, opportunity to uh, present myself, what I do, and my hobby. So, uh, yeah, I was very, uh, very happy to, to, to get the uh, invitation because it's very, uh, it's confirming to me that I'm doing something nice for other people. Uh, so, uh, I'm, I'm Randy. I'm 27 years old. I'm from the Netherlands. I'm still a student. I study aeronautical engineering in Delft. Uh, currently, I am, uh, as you can see, it's a little bit messy. I'm in a storage room of my father's company. He gave me uh, some area over here where I uh, could place my printers and uh, I could do my thing. So that's why you see all these tires. Uh, they're all for my father's company and stuff like that. You see some boxes over here. Uh, I got a, a Etsy store where I sell the models that I make. Uh, so that's what you see all over here. Um, I put some tables over here where I could present my stuff. So um, I also have a cheat sheet, so I don't forget some things to say. Um, yeah, so I run, a, I run a YouTube channel called Spaceship Mania, and I make, I make uh, spaceships. I model them myself using uh, CAD software, Fusion 360. And um, I also have some experience with CAD software with my study because I do the aeronautic engineering and we need to design stuff. But um, I use Fusion 360. It's, um, it's a very good program to draw. It's very easy to learn for, for young people, also old people, it doesn't matter. It's very good. And you can also make complex models with moving parts. So that's why Fusion 360 is a very good program uh, very good software and I choose to work with that and of course I use 3d printers uh, that's that's why I'm a little bit famous on on the, on the YouTube uh, yeah I designed it myself and then I make it with my printers uh, let me check if I see. how did I get started well I've always been a science fiction fan uh, it started when I was young uh, I, I watched Star Wars movie and I played games Halo I don't know if some of you are familiar with, but I know you are familiar with Star Wars because I also saw that the 501st Legion is also part of the festival, which is very exciting. Um, so that's always something that I really liked. And um, currently I'm doing aeronautical engineering, but I want to do something with space when I uh, graduate, hopefully next year. And uh, that's why you see also a lot of, of rockets so I make science fiction models, but also rockets. Uh, science fiction, but real world, doesn't matter. Uh, lately I've been a lot designing SpaceX models because SpaceX, everybody knows them. If you're a little bit uh, involved in, in, in the space industry or you're watching the news, you know that SpaceX is doing some great stuff. They are reusing their rockets. They are going to open up space for common people. Of course, you will have to have a lot of money, but it's getting cheaper. And uh, Starship, which you see over here, is of course very famous. Uh, SpaceX is currently designing this rocket, which will be revolutionary. Currently, it's still science fiction because it's only on paper and they made some 3D models of it and they are building it right now. So SpaceX is actually making science fiction science fact. And that's why I really love to make these models. And of course, uh, I sell smaller models on my Etsy store, which I will uh, put a link in the chat if I can do that. But I will do it at the end of the video. We got the, the Starship Lunar Lander, which is also uh, a concept design of SpaceX. They are, they are uh, joining NASA to to make to make vehicles for them to go back to the moon. So they NASA selects a few companies and they uh, they come up with concept designs. NASA just says, okay, private companies, you design our stuff, our vehicles. It needs to land on the moon. It needs to take people, cargo, and that. And then they came up with this model. So also make this one and. Uh, 
what I also like to do with my models is make them a little bit uh, interactable so you can play around with it. And I put a small, so this is going to be the cargo bay. And I also put a small elevator in it, which you see if you, if you watch uh, SpaceX concept art, you see them with the elevator bringing the astronauts, bringing the, the hardware to, to the moon surface. So I also like to, to include that in my models. And of course, a working door, cargo bay door. So that's, that's what I do. Now, currently I have four 3D printers and I started with the Creality CR10S, which is standing uh, behind the models. After the meeting, I will take off the camera and show you everything. So uh, from now, you have to do it with what I say. You probably see it a little bit over there, but uh, if you have a little bit patient, I'm going to show you everything. The Creality CR10S is a very big, big printer. It's, it has a built so surface, 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter, and it can print 40 centimeter high. So you can print almost the entire rocket in one go. That's how big it is. And that's why I chose to, to, uh, to buy the Creality CR10 at first, because I hadn't any experience with 3D printing. Uh, some of them were at my school. I saw people making 3D printers of making, making stuff with 3D printers, I should say. And I, I never printed anything. I just went to, to YouTube, saw, saw, saw some videos of the 3D print and I was like, now, I wanted to make my own models and I want to use a 3D printer for it. Because Revel, the, the famous company, the model making company where you can buy battleships, tanks, they don't make SpaceX rockets, unfortunately. So I thought, then I have to make it myself. And that's why a 3D printer is very handy. You can make everything you want. And on the internet, you got multiple websites where you can download for free models. For example, Starship, uh, Star Destroyers, Montclamar Destroyers from Star Wars, Halo, all kinds of science fiction vehicles. You can find them there for free. People just post them over there and you can download them and, and print them if you have a 3D printer. So that's really uh, what, 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 I, uh, what decided me to, to buy a 3D printer. I, it was, the opportunities were limitless. So if, uh, let me look for a second if I told everything. Yeah, okay. So the first thing I made with my 3D printer was this uh, CAS assault carrier from Halo. I, I couldn't find it anywhere on, on, on the internet because I wanted to buy it, uh, wh what I just told you. But no model maker sold these vehicles. So I decided to make it myself. I found the, the files on the internet and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to buy a 3D printer as big as possible because bigger is better. And I'm, we'll see where it goes. And while I was printing, I was okay. Like maybe I should film it because I plan to make this model, which I already sold, but I made one, I made one, which was almost a meter. It was very big. Uh, yeah, bigger is better, I thought. So I recorded it and I posted it on YouTube and that's how I, I really started getting into model making and making videos and posting them on the internet. And then I get comments, I get likes, people said, could you make this, could you make that? And it really inspired me to do more and more and yeah, it really, it really paid off. I'm still not where I want to be with my YouTube channel. I want to be very big. Now I got 1400 subscribers and still growing, but it's been a year now. So a year and a half since I bought my first printer and made my first model. And uh, so I went from downloading models and printing them uh, with my printer to making my own models and printing them and selling them. And it's, yeah, it's really going uh, the right way. So the model making, how it really start? It started when I 
bought my first printer. I bought, um, when I was young, I bought one model kit from Revel, which was a big battleship, and I never finished it. It's still standing in my room uh, at home, but I never finished it. And it's very ironic that today I'm making my own models. Well, my first model, I never finished. It's quite funny. Um, so what tools do I use? Of course, I use the software, which I already told. I use my 3D printers. And um, for, for model making, I don't consider myself, to be honest, a, a professional model maker because I'm still learning every time. Of course, there's always room for improvement. But every time I make a new model, I, I try to, to improve myself, make it a little bit more difficult, make a little bit more complex model with extra moving parts, moving wings, moving doors, landing gears. Um, so I'm not very professional in my opinion. You got some model makers that add, for example, lights to the engine. And I'm planning to do that in the future. Um, so I got also already some tools over here. For example, the soldering iron for, for connecting wires, because I'm already planning to do that in, I don't know, maybe the next, uh, next model, uh, which is laying over here. It's a Star Wars model, the CIS Locker Hulk from the Clone Wars. And, um, I entirely designed it myself and I made it hollow so it can fit, for example, um, the, the, I um, forgot how, how they call these, uh, but to transmit light. So you got these wires running uh, throughout your entire model and you can resemble lights, for example, or, um, you can put lights in the engine. So I made them also hollow and I can, uh, if I do blue LED lights in here, I can resemble the ion engines, for example. So I'm currently working on this model and I'm recording everything. So it will be my next video on YouTube. And what I normally used is for painting, for example, just a spray cam from the local store. And this is a primer spray can and it's very cheap. It's, it doesn't require any skills. Um, so that's, that's a pro, but in the future, I'm planning to, uh, buy a airbrush and an airbrush allows you to be more precise. For example, if I want to paint a blue line over here, normally I would use tape to cover up the areas which I don't want to be painted. And then I would just spray paint blue, for example, and then everything will be blue because spray can has a very wide, a very, very large surface area, which it sprays on. It can be handy for big uh, surfaces, but for small details, it's not. So that's uh, something I'm going to do in the future. I'm going to buy airbrush and you can, very precisely paint lines or, or anything, uh, details which you want. Normally or currently I'm using just pencils for small details, pencils. So I got the, the spray cans for the big areas. And then I would, uh, with using a Tamina acrylic paint, I will paint details such as uh, the windows which you see over here, uh, engines. It's still very handy, but it doesn't always give me the result that I want. So that's why I'm going to invest in Airbrush. And uh, yeah, I will, for sure, the quality will improve when I do that. I have a uh, question, Randy, talking yeah. about uh, brushing and uh, painting. I have a question from Martin. Uh, from what material do you make those models? Okay. He said that that's amazing and the, he will check your channel. Okay, great. Um, the models are made from PLA. So for, for, for the 3D printers, you got multiple options. Of course, you got different printers because some printers can 
uh, they can print metal, but th those are very industrial printers. I don't have them. I can print uh, plastics, just plastics, but PLA is the most common plastic. It's very friendly to use. It doesn't require very hot melting temperature. It's, it's easy to print with. It is not poison. It's, it's uh, eco-friendly somehow. So when it's printing in this room and I'm standing over here, I don't smell molten plastic. So I use PLA and it's, it's uh, not very expensive. So that's what I use. It's, the quality is decent. Uh, you could also got uh, PAT or PATG. You got different types. Those are more stronger, but they, they smell like, like, yeah, burnt plastic. It's not healthy to be around a printer that's printing with those uh, plastics, the, the same plastics that the Lego, Lego uh, blocks use. Uh, that's not, that's not uh, the very good for your health. So I use PLA and um, yeah, it's good for the models. It doesn't require, the models don't require to, to be under pressure or, or it doesn't, doesn't require the plastic to be very strong. If I drop it from the table, it won't break. So it's strong enough. So that's what I use. Um, back to where I was. So of course I use pliers and um, I can use a little example. So this is my latest model. And I got two of the same, same uh, parts. This is the main body of the CIS Luckerock. And uh, this one filled at 90%. It's something that happens when you, uh, people with 3D printers, they can relate. When the part is almost finished, something can go wrong and it, 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 you can destroy it or the printer just does something and you need to, to uh, stop the printing. So I got two of the same parts. And what you see over here, this one, I cleared everything because a printer, it cannot print in the air. It needs something to support it. So when you are going to make a roof, for example, so this is the way it orientates. It's, it's printed on the build plate and this, this is pointing up. Something need to, needs to support the overhanging parts. So that's, that's why it looks like this when it comes off a printer. This is specially made but when I use, when I use a plier, I can just remove it. It's very, very easy. Not always, but for example, the stuff inside, it, it will require some, some force to get off, but you will, you will be able to, to get it clean. So that's why, uh, also PLA it's, it's very, uh, very friendly easy to work with, I should say, but it's still strong because when I, I don't want to do it too hard, but I can apply some decent force to it and it's still, it's still okay. So that's how it's, uh, the, the 3D printer works. And of course, um, a spoon because the printer has a flat surface and you need to get it off then you sometimes need to use a spoon. Uh, I got flexible build plates with my latest uh, Prusa, Prusa printers. So uh, today I got four printers. I recently bought two Prusa printers, which are smaller, but the quality is way better. I will show them uh, at the end of my talk and you will see how, uh, how everything works. I also use uh, a Dremel, Dremel, I don't know how to pronounce it in, uh, in English. You can, you can add, add different types of tools to it. So you can sand or you can cut something off. I don't use it too much, uh, but sometimes I do. Mostly, I think it's a little bit too overpowered for the, for the PLA because the PLA is not that strong. So you don't need very strong tools, but I did use it once. And of course, uh, sanding paper, because when I spray, uh, spray paint something, mostly I start with 
the primers and then I used the sanding paper to get rid of all the lines. Because the 3D printers, if you look very good, you can see the layers. And it looks funny, but sometimes I don't want it. So I get, I, I apply some of prime of primer layers and then uh, send it off just using sandpaper from the local, the local store, the same store where I, I buy the spray cans. So that's also an example that you can, you can make models without expensive tools. You don't need, need uh, a lot of uh, difficult tools which require very high skills. You can do it with everything you want. So as you see uh, with this model, I, in my model, in my 3D model, I cut it in pieces. So I can print it in the right way because I have, I have to have a flat surface preferably. So that's why I cut it in different pieces. And uh, when I glue it together, you always get seams. So you always, you will always see a line where you glue the two parts together. And also from my local store is filler, which normally you would use to cover up seams in the wall or I don't know. Uh, this is for wood, but it doesn't matter. I use it on my plastic models and it's very easy to sand away. So I just take a little bit of this stuff, put it with my finger onto my models, onto the seams to cover up uh, holes, lines, a little bit, uh, spread it with my finger, let it dry, and then use the, the sanding paper to get rid of it, then spray paint it sometimes more and you don't see anything there. So that's also very handy filler. So those are the tools that I use. Now, um, so the project I'm working on right now, I already told you about, is the CIS Locker Hulk. Um, I hope you're very familiar with the Clone Wars, uh, so I don't have to explain too much what it is. It's, it's a battleship, it's a cargo ship. It is used by the, the system of the Confederacy of Independent Systems. And um, you can see it in, in Star Wars The Phantom Menace in the third part as well. Uh, somewhere on the background, I guess. But in this model, for the first time, I will implement lights. So I'm going to, uh, as I said before, I want to, to add blue LEDs to the engine to resemble uh, iron engines. I will um, add lights. And I still forgot the name, but you got these transparent tubes. They, they, they can transmit light. So if you put it into your model, you can have lights everywhere to make the model looks, look more interesting. Um, it got hanger base, which I also want to, to uh, light up. And um, because it's still the first, this, this is the first time I'm going to do this. So I don't know if I made the right design choices for implementing lights and stuff like that. So as you see it right here, it might change in the future, but I'm the kind of guy, and I think that's also something that, that is a part of model making. You just try stuff. And the advantage of me designing my own models and having a 3D printer always ready to go is that if this part isn't good enough, I'll just change it, print it again, and I got myself a new model. That's a very big advantage of 3D printing. So I also hope to buy the airbrush and implement it on this model. I will add lights and yeah, in, in that way I'm trying to, to improve myself and of course the quality of my videos, uh, it will be way more interesting to, to look at my videos if I do something more interesting, more complex, because what I did before was just, 
I started with just downloading someone else's file, someone else's model, print it, paint it, and then post it on the internet. And people were already going crazy and re were very enthusiastic. But now I want to improve myself. I want to make better models, more complex, improve my own skills, of course. And so that's what you see over here. Is this is where I started. And you can see over here, I got models with moving parts. Just everything is improving. So the CIS Luckerock, I hope to finish it in a few weeks. I'm very busy with school, so I'm not, uh, not, not making a lot of progress, but it's going the right way. So that's what I'm working on right now. Um, Something I was working in the past and uh, this, this model, this inspired me to, to start designing my own model because this one, I also got it from Thingiverse and it's a UNSC Infinity from Halo. Um, I just took the model from the internet and it was, a, the files were a little bit corrupted. So when I loaded it into my software, uh, to, to make it ready for 3D printing. Uh, it wasn't really uh, cooperating. It was printable, but this was the first time I tried to make it hollow so I could fit electronics in it and add lights. But yeah, you might not see it. It, it, was, it was very, it was a headache to, to make it hollow and stuff like that. And that's when I first realized that, you know, maybe I should start designing my own models so I can make it from the ground off from the start as how, how I want it to be and it would make my it would make it myself way more easier if I designed it to be it in the way that I want it to be so not just take something and then try to make it something else but just make designing it like that so this is a project uh, it's not finished and I guess I won't finish it ever because I don't really like it how it is. It's, it's not designed by myself and it's, yeah, it's difficult to make it with, with electronics. So it's still here. I don't throw it away. I don't know why, because maybe I, I, I think I will finish it one day, but I think it, it will be better if I design this same vehicle myself. Uh, it will be way better. So let me take a look at my cheat sheet. Um, only half an hour. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now is uh, one thing I also want to do in the future is maybe add dioramas to my models. So uh, for the people that don't know what a diorama is, it's actually creating the scene around the, the model. So for example, this is the, the Starship Lunar Lander. And if I make a diorama, I will probably, I will try to make the moon landscape around it and really create the feeling that the, this vehicle is landed on the moon. And that's something I also want to, 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 uh, to take a look at. Uh, you see a lot of, for example, the train modelers, the people with the small miniature trains, they always make dioramas. They make entire landscapes and it's quite funny to, to, uh, to see. So if, I think it would really add some value to the models. So if I could present it uh, in, inside a diorama uh, with the surrounding and where it needs to fit or, or uh, yeah, it would really, yeah, it would be, would be uh, really nice. So that's also something I'm going to look at in the future. Um, so that was a little bit about the models. And now I'm going to take the camera, which I take. Uh, can I turn around? So this is my uh, workspace, not really my workspace, but this is the area where my 3D printers are. And um, if people have questions, you can ask.
because I told most of my story. Maybe I need to clean a little bit. Yes. So what you see over here, this is my first printer. It's the Creality CR10S and it's, it's very big. For size comparison, I could easily, easily print this entire rocket using this printer. But um, at the moment, I stumbled upon a problem because size was not my limiting factor, it was time. It takes a lot of time to print some, something that big. For example, if you would use the, this entire volume just to make a, a very big square, it would take you days, maybe a week. And um, yeah, I don't want this machine running for that long. It, it's, it's risky. And uh, since I am, uh, that's by the way where, <laughs> where I put my, my camera. I'm at, at the company of my father and he, he doesn't allow me to print at night, for example, because he doesn't trust these machines. And in reality, it's from China. I don't hate China, but it can be indeed be risky. Uh, these are the Prusas. They are from uh, the Czech Republic. Uh, very famous uh, printers. I guess the, the owner of the Prusa printers he, he started with the printers. So he's always uh, at the front of innovation. So uh, these are my latest two printers and they are smaller because I don't really use the big areas. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a waste, it's a waste. This area over here, the build plates, you call it the build plate, uh, it's get, it gets hot because when it's hot, the PLA will stick to the plastic, will stick to the surface, and it will not warp. You, sometimes you got a problem where you got a, a part with a flat bottom; it can warp. So the edges are are curling upwards, and you don't want that. You want straight. So uh, the entire surface gets hot, and it, use, it consumes a lot of energy. And when you're only printing something the size of this boat, for example, uh, that's, that's, that's a big waste. So you don't want that. What I, by the way, did, uh, this is the console. So this is when I turn it on, um, you can select everything over here. I pulled off the, the plug, so I can't run it. I can run this one. Uh, there's also one over here and it's hidden inside an enclosure. Because what I told you guys, um, the, the surface gets hot. Of course, the, the, the PLA, the plastic needs to melt. So it also gets hot. And you want to maintain uh, a decent temperature around your model. So for example, my first printer was in my room uh, next to my bedroom. I got a study room over there and in the winter, that room got, I don't know, maybe 10 degrees, very cold at least. And that's not good for the quality. So I decided to build an enclosure, including lights and of course a glass so I can take a look at it. And it was making a lot of sound. So I also decided to add some, uh, yeah, just um, isolation material to, to reduce the noise. And um, yeah, it really worked fine. I didn't hear a lot of noise and the quality of the printing was good. It, w it became very hot in here. So I could lower the temperature of the build plate and yeah, it was, uh, it was a good choice. But today it stands in this room and it's always a very stable, stable temperature in here. I guess it's always around, mm, maybe 20 degrees, at, at least 15, probably 18. So it's a little bit over-engineered right now. So most of the time when I run this, when I run, when I run this uh, printer, I would keep a little bit of uh, opening in my door to 
release the war the heat because you don't want it to be too warm because when it's too warm it uh, stays molten and that's something you also don't want so yeah but i'm not using these two printers a lot lately uh, because since i bought this one these are smaller but it's ex more expensive but the quality is way better way better so yeah i, I prioritize these two and i'm not sure what i'm going to do with these two probably i'm um, i will use them when i'm going to make something big but that hasn't occurred yet so it's a little bit messy also um we're going to move from to another building so maybe i'll decide to sell them maybe i decide to keep them uh, i don't know for now i'm using this one and um, so this is the build plate and as you can see the build plate it's flexible so when i print something i can just um, yeah I'm, i only have one hand but if i bend it a little bit the model comes uh, free of the surface and sometimes when i use this printer i had to use the spoon that one and sometimes i really as you can see over here there are some uh, leftover PLA. I really had to use a lot of force and almost use violence to get it off, which you don't want that. You don't want that. And this is, is just a, a matter of bending the, the plates and it gets loose. And I love it. I really love it. So these two printers are my favorite right now. So uh, got a lot of trash, spare parts. Um, what is more interesting to show you guys? Actually, I already told most of my story. Uh, maybe it would be fun if I just turn it on. So this is how this this is the PLA. It comes in in uh, spools. Uh, this is one kilogram. Oh, it's upside down. Uh, it tells you. Well, it doesn't tell the temperature. Okay, so the PLA it has it comes inside over here, and then it's got it's it needs to be melted at 200 degrees. So I'm just going to print something. Print from SD. That's where my files are. Mm. Yeah, let's just print two starships. So I, I select that one. And now you can see over here, this is the temperature of the nozzle, which is over here. You already see it as a little bit of plastic over here. <coughs> and now it's going to heat up. And this one is the build plate, which is going to be 60 degrees. This is the speed. So you, I can I can decide to if I want to. Oh, it's not starting yet. So to fa to make it faster, you can see how long it will take. So this print uh, are two of these small starships are going. We are going to print them, and it takes yeah ten hours. So time is the limiting factor that's uh, this advantage i can speed it up if i want but it will so the, the quality will suffer and so i found the right settings in which i think it's fast enough and it's still uh, good quality So maybe um, if winter starts and in the Netherlands, I have to be honest, winters aren't that cold. But if it gets too cold in this area, I will probably design a similar enclosure for these printers to 
just make sure that the heat or the, the difference between the temperatures, the environment and the temperature of the build plate and the nozzle is not too big. So it's still heating up. It's almost there. Always make sure to remove the dripping plastic. So what it will do and what it will do first is will it will go to its zero point, which is in the corner over here. And as you can hear, printers can be very noisy. And these printers are way more noisy than this one. So what it's doing right now, it's it has a magnet and it's making sure that everything, that the build plate is not uh, not turned a little, it's straight. Then it lays a little line and then it starts printing the first layer. It will first print a, a small ring around it just to make sure the, the flow of the plastic is okay. And now it starts uh, with a brim and a brim is, uh, do I have an example? No, I don't. It will print a small layer around the model to make sure that it has enough area to uh, remain stuck on the build plate. And I told you already about warping. So the, it's almost uh, in inevitable, but the, the plastic can, it will, it will let loose at some corners sometimes, not always, for example, over here. And if you have a brim around it, so this little piece of plastic, just one layer of plastic, it will prevent your model from warping. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I don't know if I can see the chat room. Chat. It's not a problem if you don't see the chat room. If there are any questions, I will uh, read it to you. Okay. I think that your presentation was very explainable. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, everything was uh, understand and uh, interesting at the same time. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Luca, what? Uh, the, uh, what is your name on YouTube? My name is uh, Spaceship Mania. I don't know if I am able to share uh, share my screen because then I can go yes, to yes. Uh, you are able because you are co-host so you are able to share your screen okay I, I by the way I can see uh, someone asking, what is the price of a check printer and a plastic roll okay so let's first start with this one this guy over here was around 500 euros 500 euros for the big one and it's a Chinese Chinese printer um, it doesn't have the sensors that this one has. So if something goes wrong, it will just continue. It's just a dumb machine, a very dumb machine. If you don't pay attention, it will just continue. And if something is in the way, it will destroy it and just continue with brute force. These machines, they sense when something goes wrong. They have crash detection. Uh, the quality is way better. It's very for a printer this one is silent doesn't make a lot so this one was 500 and this one was mm, i bought the assemble kit so i needed to to uh, screw everything together um how much does it was um i'm don't know if i include the taxes the tax um around 700 maybe 900 so almost twice as much as the bigger one but as i said before it's a better quality and because it's better quality you can print faster 
and since time is a limiting factor for me at least uh, yeah th this was just a way better option so that was that question uh, the plastic model uh, plastic uh, sorry roll is around 20 euros for a kilogram 20 euros for a kilogram this rocket it's hollow from the inside it's hollow so it's maybe 40 gram well let's say 50 gram max uh, you print yourself a model like this so if you if you uh yeah it, it sounds maybe a lot 20 20 euros for 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 uh for a roll of plastic but you can do a lot you can do a lot you can make very big models using only one roll so that's that um share content is that how i share because i have my internet browser and i can show to my youtube channel uh, yes you can share screen if you want yeah so you have a uh, on the bottom of the screen you have a bar and you have in the middle the share screen button or you can oh, write share yes okay share screen hmm. um i don't see an option to share my internet browser so maybe um, you can write it uh, on the chat if it's yeah. easier i don't know if i if i press the home button if i i will remain in this uh in this video um yeah so i got some stickers over here <laughs> so this is the name of my youtube channel okay space spaceship mania yes yes and i also got the link mm. i got a link for my store oh and perfect mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, media, that, the, it's the same name is my YouTube channel. So, Spaceship Mania. Yes, so if you look on YouTube, you will probably find me. So this is how, uh, how uh, a 3D printer works. It will lay layer after layer until it's 3D. And you can decide uh, for yourself how thick you want to be the layer so if you uh, want very uh, high layers then the model will, will look very rough but it will f it will finish faster because it doesn't have to do that many layers because they are very high but if you want quality you want the minimum amount of size for your layer so we want very tiny layers but that will take very long so that's uh, also something uh, we need to take into consideration but for people that are interested in model making i will definitely suggest to to take a look at 3d printers um i would advise the prusa but if you're on a budget you can go for the creality and they also have uh, a similar size as this one and that one is only 300 euros so that's yeah it's it's a good option for for people that are on a budget because there are still good machines but these machines are perfect in my opinion okay uh, that was a little bit of my story uh, i hope everyone enjoyed i'm going to go back yes Thank you very much, Randy. If there are uh, any questions for Randy, if not, so we are uh, approaching the closing time. Yes. So you gave us uh, your store on Etsy, yes? Yeah, that's my Etsy store. And Etsy store. I can try, but I'm afraid if I press the home button, uh, Will I remain in this chat in, in this in this Zoom meeting? 
Uh, I think that you will, but uh, if you are not, we already. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm going to try to to uh, take a look at my. Uh... Okay, try it. Oh, I'm still in. I'm still in. Okay. Uh, mania. What I will do is I will take a screenshot. Now you close your uh, you close your video. Oh. I will be back. Am I back? Yes, you're back. Okay. Now I'm going to share photo. Oh, website or Google Drive. No, 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 no. Sorry. Never mind. Uh, photos. Okay. Now you see it. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah, so this is my, uh, I took a screenshot and then I, I, I shared a photo. <laughs> so this is, this is my, uh, my uh, YouTube channel. And uh, you can see me make uh, physical models. You, I assemble them, I paint them, I make videos uh, recording myself, designing the models in Fusion. So if you're willing or want to, to look at how do I design uh, my models using the software? I also got videos about that. And because I use a lot of 3D printers, sometimes I also post uh, videos about me assembling a printer or uh, making the enclosure, the, the big uh, uh, structure around my, my uh, printer. And yeah, that's uh, about it. That's everything, I guess. So I want to thank you uh, once more for the opportunity to uh, show around. Martin uh, says that it was very interesting. All the best and good luck in your future project. Subscribe. So yeah. Martin will be your fan from now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. So if you want to uh, keep uh, up to date, uh, watch me improve my skills, watch me make more models or watch me make one of these models at the background. Uh, yeah, go check it out. Uh, subscribe, like, comment. And uh, for the people that really want to get involved, I also got a Discord channel, which you can find somewhere on my uh, YouTube channel. And um, yeah, we got a lot of people there over there that are also uh, involved in, in, in 3D printing. Uh, I got also uh, people like, uh, what about it? I don't know if you watch a lot of uh, YouTube. What about it, Marcus House? There are big YouTubers. They are also very involved in the SpaceX uh, news. So they are following uh, SpaceX news and I provide uh, models for them on their background for their success children. and a lot of subscribers yeah thank you very much so, um, Sa says a blogger yes and a vlogger <laughs> great, great okay thank you very much uh, I will wait you uh, tomorrow on uh, the zoom uh, 2 uh, on uh, TGA for film festival until tomorrow, thank you, Randy, for this wonderful presentation. Success. Thank you very much and success with uh, the festival. And uh, hopefully till next year. Yes, of course. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.